as, as we call it, her 30 seconds of fame. So Daisy, take us away. Tell us who you are and what school you're affiliated with, um, and your role in the, in the, in the community maybe, and uh, something you have fun doing or a hobby. Okay, so um, my name is Daisy Mendez. I have three kids, uh, one in elementary, a first grader, um, an eighth grader, and a 10th grader. Um, I speak Spanish. I'm originally from Mexico. Um, I love to cook, <laughs> and uh, I'm a caregiver. I take care of a elderly, an elderly gentleman. Wonderful. Well, we're very happy to have you with us. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, too. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this, before we start with the agenda, I have the one apology. You got, you got a Barry file today that wasn't Randolph and uh, Brookfield and Braintree. It was uh, a Barry uh, sore questions. Disregard those questions. They got sent to the, to the wrong design team. It, it may not be the last time it happens. I hope it is, but... Uh, Again, as I shared with you, we have two uh, two initiatives going on simultaneously, and uh, they're quite a bit alike, and yet they're quite a bit different. So, with that, I'm going to jump right in, and I want to I want to chat with you a little bit about uh, kind of the focus for where we're going, and I want to share with you. Um, I, I sent you this copy, and it's uh, also in the uh, shared drive. Uh, but also to say that, um, you know, we asked last time about the uh, 2017 through 2020 strategic plan, uh, which I sent you. That's more a PowerPoint overview. What I'm, what I'm sharing with you now is more of where we're going. And let me get that up so that you can see it. You see the, uh, the colored uh, OSSD ends plan? Somebody just say yes or no, you can see it? Yep. Okay. All right, so uh, this is what I sent you and this will help you to chart a little bit uh, more of where we're going. You'll see there are four goals on this, they're all color coded, but the, the columns are the same as far as their headers. Uh, what do we wanna change? Uh, where we would like to be, where are we now? Uh, the differences between desired and current states, um, and what must be done to bridge that gap. Now, this is this is what the superintendent presents to the board, and so this is a format for you to think about. Uh, again, some of the data that we're going to glean from these forums and from the surveys uh, will speak to this, and some of it won't. Uh, some of it will be more what administrators might use to create uh, what's called uh, the means, the board's role is what are the outcome or the ends? And this is an ends monitoring report uh, from fall of 2020. So I just want to highlight that for you to keep in mind, uh, these are the kind of metrics that we're gonna be using to move us, move us forward. Uh, so any, any thoughts, questions, uh, anything obvious, not obvious here? Uh, anything about the priorities? Anything, Lane or Ann, that you'd like to say uh, with so, regard to this? Yeah, I think the, the data is important to talk a little bit about. Remember that a lot of this is based on the state testing data. The state was three years behind in keeping its data um, up to speed, as well as the fact that we haven't had S back for uh, a year because of COVID. Um, so this data is at least two years old at this point in time that's in there. There have been significant improvements, um, especially at the elementary level uh, at this point in time, at least on our local assessments, um, which this isn't tracking. So just so just so people are aware, this is from about two years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Except for special maybe... education. Sorry about that. Special education yeah. is current. Uh, Lane, speak a little bit about the difference between local assessments and the SBAC. So um, No Child Left Behind way back when, when it came out, um, tried to build accountability into education. And one of the ways that they did that was they required all the states um, 
to sign into some sort of statewide testing. Um, all, pretty much all the states did something a little bit different. Um, some of the New England states uh, did you know, collaborate on the same test. Um, but SBAC is the accountability that started with uh, No Child Left Behind. And it's important that we perform well on SBAC because it feeds into um, the federal government and it's actually used at a state level to determine federal funding that comes in um, under title funds. Those are worth about a million dollars a year to us um, as a district. Um, so it's quite significant. Um, this is a district, just so folks know, um, that until the last year or so, it took a couple of years to build up in the budget and get some structures in place. Um, this district has never had a curriculum director. This district has never had an assistant superintendent. This district has never had a professional development line um, at the district level to drive any improvements in academics until the last two years. Um, so there's been a lot of structural work um, that's gone on um, to try to address you know, what we're seeing in the data here. And uh, it is starting to pay off. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they actually run SBAC this year, even though we've been in hybrid session most of the time um, to hopefully see what the payoff um, has been so far. So just a really quick overview. Um, we do have local assessments that we use. Uh, we use two different software packages. We use Track My Progress for ELA and math, and we use STAR 360 um, to get up through the, uh, the high school grades um, for both. And so those give us pretty much the same data that uh, SBAC does, um, but they're more useful for the teachers uh, because they can give, a, give those assessments to the students on the fly in a shorter format, you know, in 15, 20 minutes, and they can get immediate data on whether the kids are learning uh, what they should in terms of what's being taught right now so that the teachers can adjust immediately um, if the, the students aren't meet, meeting the standards the way that they should be. So brief overview. Great. And thank you. I um, thank you for being willing to do it on the fly, Lane. I should have had a conversation with you in advance, but you handled no it very worries. well. And you've done this before. <laughs> All right. So any questions about kind of where we're, where we're going with this? Can I just, I, I'm going to go ahead, ask Anne. Lane to maybe just clarify too. Part of what he shared with the board is, is as students have migrated from the elementary school over to the middle school, some of the focus on the middle school has been that we've seen a drop in the, the performance of those students. So that's been part of the reason why we're focusing a little bit on that middle school and a middle school structure is to understand what is there something in the way that we're doing things at the middle level that might be creating that difference in performance? Yeah, Ann brings up a very good point. Um, when I looked at the data going back 10 years, um, the pattern has always been the same, um, regardless of which assessment the state was using because the state's changed assessments um, in the last decade. Um, but what you'll see is in the elementary levels, you'll see the performance of the students rising each year. And then all of a sudden, around fifth or sixth grade, you'll start to see this drop um, in the transition year over to the high school. It bottoms out. Um, it hovers down there for a year through eighth grade. And then in ninth grade, it starts to rise again. And that pattern, that shape of that, that graph, when you're looking at what's happening in student performance, that has been a constant um, for at least a decade. Um, and so one of the reasons that we were focusing at the middle school level is because that's usually a pretty good indication uh, that we've got some structural issues um, in terms of the way that we're doing things um, that, that need to be addressed. And that was part of the reason that we did some major changes there um, last year. You know, we've got a, a head of house who's actually with us tonight um, that is actually looking at a, a full middle school model um, to try to bring, bring in, analyze the, the, the issues that are happening, analyze the needs, and then um, get some good things going in, in those grade levels. <clears throat> Well, I might say is somewhat tongue in cheek that uh, at the middle school level, uh, for those of you that have student children at home that are in middle school, there's the same drop off in how clean they have their room and how well they do their chores at home. It's something about the right and left brain synapse aren't connecting. So don't think it just happens in school. Any other thoughts or issues before we move on here? Daisy, do you have a question? 
No? Okay. I thought you were giving me a wave here. Maybe that's just a wave goodbye. All right. So we are moving into forums. Uh, they're coming right up on Wednesday, I think it is. Uh, I just want to make sure folks are, uh, are all set. I, I went through all of the forum lists today. And I'm, I'm also going to say I'm pleased that I'm, I'm now one of you. I have, I'm, thanks to Lane and to Tina, I have a uh, OSSD uh, Google account. So now, Ann, you and I can work together on scheduling uh, Google Meet meetings. I'll, I'll take over and I'll invite all of the participants from the different stakeholder groups to their respective forums. So you can take that off your, uh, your to-do list. Um, and so I'm going to be doing that after tonight uh, because Wednesday is our first forum. I hope that you've been in communication with folks. Um, and I would ask that tomorrow you touch base with them again, the kind of the day before. Uh, but tonight or tomorrow morning early, I'm going to be uh, sending the finalized questions after we finish that work tonight. I'm going to send them the forum operations and questions with that. And also with it are, are school themes that can help them to think about what their feedback might be. Uh, so let me just step back and hear from each of you. Uh, I know that this is kind of semester change and this is probably one of the worst times in, a, in school uh, to be able to uh, ask people and invite them to do one more thing. So many thanks to you for all your good work around that. Talk to us in mass. Um, how's it, how's it been going? Any strategies that worked really well? Uh, I know some of the lists are pretty long and, uh, and some of them might be a little bit easier. I know, uh, poor Lisa's out there uh, trying to get alumni to, uh, remember where their roots were and to come back and, and join us. So what are you, what are your thoughts? Everyone doing okay? Yeah, Winton, this is yeah. David. Yep. Um, one, just, I really appreciated the um, the background of why we're focusing on middle school right now. And because uh, I know when there's been community meetings about maybe changing how the middle school is structured, there was some resistance from parents. But I just, my two cents would be as you go through these middle school forums, maybe that same background of just sharing how there's a dip in performance over those couple, two or three grade years might help orient people to the discussion and be more open to the idea of change and that change might be a good thing in this situation. Okay. So Lane and Ann, is there a best way to do that? Yeah, we, um, we had talked, put a little meat on the bones for those that, that may not have been a part of those discussions a year or so ago. Um, we had talked about, you know, creating a, a preschool um, across the district for all students. And um, it, that idea actually got combined with this idea of, hey, we've got these, these concerns about how the students are performing in the middle school grades. Maybe we can combine the two. And we had talked at the time about, well, we're going to need space for all these preschoolers. Um, to be able to come in. So how about we move the seventh grade up to RUHS, which has, has the space to do it, and then create a true middle school model for grades six to eight. Um, and we even have quite a bit in uh, facilities reserved that if we need to do some structural changes to the building itself to support that, we, we would be able to do that. We were on board to kind of fast track that a little bit. Um, teachers got involved, um, sent some emails out to the community. And so when we had the first open forum um, to discuss it, a lot of parents came up with information with concerns that the teachers were sending around online. Um, we talked a little bit and said, hey, you know, we realize that this may be making people a little bit nervous, but at the same token, you can't ask us to be trying to address these issues while not allowing us to move forward on the things that might solve these problems. Um, so we made an agreement and the agreement was this, is that we'll get the middle school, the seventh and eighth grade up and running well. And once we prove that they are up and running well, um, the town and the folks that we talked to in the open forums at that time 
um, said, hey, if you do that, then we're, we'll, we'll be happy to support the transition of the sixth grade um, to RUHS. And so we are in the middle of that process right now. Um, that was the reason for the restructuring, um, for bringing in a new administrative structure um, for those uh, current seventh and eighth graders, is to really get that middle school model up and flowing, um, to get those students performing as, as, as best as we can make them, and then get ready, hopefully, for that sixth grade to come on over and to, to build a true middle school model um, with those grades. So adding a, little, yeah. adding a little bit of meat to the conversation. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, excellent information. And I'm just trying to think. So probably parents are going to be the ones most interested in these forums. So I wonder, I wonder, Lane, if you'd be willing to do a cameo. And we're talking about the the parent one, which is oh, February 11th. Um, that might be the one to uh, to talk a little. The teachers know about this. Is it just parents that don't know the rationale behind? Are the teachers uh, those, pretty well versed. Those that were involved in it um, do know, but it, it definitely could be um, spoken about more. February 11th in the evening is going to be problematic um, because I've got the support staff negotiations for their contract. Um, that's going on that night. I'm happy to show up to any of the meetings folks need me to. Um, yeah. And I can even do a little mini presentation so I'm not talking off the cuff, um, but that'll be a problematic night just because I'll be at so the, yeah. doing the negotiations with the support staff that evening. I wonder, uh, could you do a little video that we just play? <laughs> I can try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think, maybe just, maybe just send a, uh, some talking points and because I've got at February 11th at three, I've got the teacher forum. And if I had talking points between Ann and myself or uh, David, uh, I, I don't know there. Uh, I think we could, uh, we could work through this. Yeah, those, uh, those are easy. Cause I, like I said, I did presentations at the time. I just have to go back, find them, update them a little bit. Okay. When I'm on yeah. that, I'm on that support. Team ah. negotiations. <laughs> so I'm sorry about wow. that. We're both going to be leaving you. All right. Oh, well, God. you know, even if I had like a, a PowerPoint slide that just had bullet points or a couple of slides, I could shift into that and just provide that rationale and uh, go from there. And, and David, are you in negotiations that night? Okay, not. No, I'm not. Okay. All right. Uh, let, let, let's leave it at that then, uh, Lane. If you'll send me uh, just some uh, some talking points around rationale, that would that would be great. Okay. All right. So, uh, just reinforcing what I uh, the email that I sent you today. Make sure that uh, your lists are set for forums. The emails are in them. And that you you circle back and send out a confirmation uh, to them. Actually, if I'm doing that tomorrow, maybe that's their confirmation because the first ones are on Wednesday. For the ones that are later than Wednesday, it would be good if the day before, as a standard operating practice, you just follow up, make sure that uh, folks are ready. And you know, sometimes there's a you know in migration, out migration, things happen. People can't come, or new people want to come. Uh, so I think we're set on that. Let's move now to forum questions. I went through and I think I made uh, most of the edits that we talked about last time. And many thanks to David and, and uh, Lane for uh, sending us the uh, kind of the talking points around uh, these issues. So let's just take it question by question. Uh, I did move the middle school uh, forums first. And so that's set. And uh, just uh, are, are we okay with, excuse me, the way this question is worded? What knowledge, skills, and tools do middle school students need to be prepared for the next stage of their lives? Is that an okay question? Okay. And what does Randolph Middle School need to stop start? so on and so forth. 
physically, emotionally, intellectually safe. We good on that one? Okay. Yep. Thumbs up, whatever, whatever works. Uh, middle school, ensure, uh, maintain a positive attitude. Folks feeling okay about that one. Okay, I don't see quite as much affirmation. Do we do we need to do a little wordsmithing on that? We're good. All right. Uh, the next one, uh, middle school stop, start, continue doing around positive school culture and climate. And this, uh, with the italics here is what Lane and David uh, put together. So that's designed just to help uh, folks uh, better understand the difference between culture and climate. So I think we're good on that. Uh, question five. Uh, maybe I should, well, question five's got quite a bit uh, of what uh, what happens now, the math, the science, the schedules, the supports. Are folks okay with that question? Question five. Okay. And then question six, uh, the current leadership structure. Um, we okay with how that one's worded and the descriptions that help guide people that might not be quite as much in the know? We're good on that? David, any, any comment? I see you got your mic on. Oh, okay, all right. And the different models, uh, the transition process. That, I'm going to back up to that other one. It says principal. Do we so because we have the head of the lower school who's Lisa. Yeah. And then we have a principal who helps out. So is that Elijah? And then and then Katie does the upper school. Is am I understanding the structure correctly? Yeah, as well as curric curriculum for upper school with Katie. Okay, so maybe we want to say principal Elijah Hawks so that so that people know who we're referring to. Are you on question six, Ann? Uh, it was on the leadership structure. Yes, just say principal and just put in parentheses Elijah Hawks so maybe they know and maybe Lisa Floyd for head of lower grades because some people might not know who does what. From the from the community. So oh, Lisa Floyd for grades seven and eight. Seven through nine. Seven, seven through nine. Grades. Yeah. Well, no, put hers up under head of low. You know where it says head of lower grades seven through nine. You can just oh, got put it. her name yeah. there. And got it. That way, people know they know who's who's where. Elijah down here. Yeah. And Elijah, and so that, sorry, who has an E before the S in Hawks. And like he, right there? He, yeah, and his role spans grades 7 through 12. Thank you. Good, good, uh, good feedback, Anne. Thank you. Just for those of us that aren't as clear, this is where Lane, you were saying this is a new structure that's just been in play for a year. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Any any other changes? Hi, Wynn. It's Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, so I just had. Uh, two questions, and, and uh, one is kind of just a semantic one, and one's a little bit more about the process as we get ready for the forums. So, uh, Lindsay and I, we're going to be facilitating the parent meetings, and uh, we, had, we had talked about the stop, start, continue. Oh, yes. Yep. Phrase. Yep. And um, I did talk to you a little bit about that, and um, yep. we were, we were kind of concerned that um, that's sort of relying on the parents to have a kind of a depth of knowledge about 
what the different initiatives are, like, you know, what would you stop? You know, what would you continue? And we were wondering if we, for our forum, if that question was just changed to, you know, what would you do? And I, I don't think it's gonna skew your data analysis if we just make it, you know, what would you do to ensure students maintain a positive attitude? And then, you know, they may mention something that the people behind the, you know, in the back room know that we're actually doing already, but they didn't know. And that would confirm, okay, well, that means continue. Um, and they may mention something that they think is not helping based on their own experience, and that may be a stop, but we, we were kind of concerned about the stop, start, continue, and they might be sort of hesitant to provide feedback because they didn't do their homework or don't really know, you know, what are all the different initiatives going on. All right. Thank you, Jeff, for bringing that up. I actually changed it in both question four and in question two. To what? So I took out stop, start, continue, and put in need to do. Good, perfect. Are, are other folks okay with that? Does that make sense to you all? Okay. All right. Any, Any other? other? The, the only the other question was about the the uh, the forum process. Those definitions are kind of lengthy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to provide the definition first and then ask the question? Well, I'm going to send these out to folks in advance. So mm -hmm. these will go out tomorrow. So they'll have these prior to the forums. And what I'll do is we'll go to the question and just uh, let folks know that uh, if they need, if they haven't read it or they need some more explanation, it will take a little bit of time to do it. But I felt like it should be there um, just so they're a bit more comfortable in the kind of the domain that they're speaking to. Winton, do you yep. want to do you want to um, make that same change to the number three question that has the stop, start, continue? Yeah, good idea. Got it done. Any other changes like that? I do wonder if it may be worth just indicating on number four that the or the leadership one that that is a new leadership in the last year, just so that again parents kind of know that as a discussion. And I wonder if it would be able to have a small something that talks about how it's different, because I guess that might be what some people are going to look at is if there's this new model, maybe what did they change, and kind of what is that? what are their hopes that that's going to change from what was happening in the last decade? I don't know if that gets too in depth, but I'm thinking of some of the elementary parents that are going to be coming in and really be concerned or interested about it, but maybe not have the knowledge of how it was running before. Elaine, is, it, is this the first year of implementation? Uh, for that particular middle school piece, yes. Okay. Again, it was um, interesting coming in a lot of my time the first couple, I think this is my fourth year. So first two years was kind of analyzing and starting to think about budget implications. And then there was a year or two of um, trying to get the structures we needed to address some of these issues into the budget. Okay. So, so if, if, there's no one else in the know. What was it before? Just seven and eight for middle school and nine through 12 in high school? Lisa, go ahead. You can probably answer because you were here. Yeah, um, I think that it was really more of, even though we called it a middle school, so I wouldn't put this language in the document, more of like a junior high model where the seventh and eighth grade functioned really similarly to the rest of the high school. Um, so really what we are focused on doing right now is looking developmentally at what students' needs are. Um, last spring, there was a group of us teachers um, from the fifth and sixth grades, parents, um, administrators, school counselors, and we were really looking at um, different 
middle level models. We actually had um, scheduled our first visits to other middle schools um, for late March last year. And then as we all know, um, schools were forced to go remote and we weren't allowed to visit other schools. So we had just gained some momentum and had visits set up and a, an observation tool to collect notes on when that happened. Um, so right now what we're really focused on is how we're gonna transition students from the elementary school into our middle school um, and really looking at the developmental needs of those students. So for example, the schedule that we had expected to run this school year um, <clears throat> allowed students to have 55 minutes in each of their classes every day at the middle level. So the high school would still run its block schedule, which we know is really effective for high school students. Um, they have longer attention spans and it allows them to do deeper work, like in science, if you're going to do a lab or something like that, you wanna have time for the teacher to get the class focused on their learning intentions, maybe teach a, a mini lesson or a concept and then dig into the lab work and then have students um, still have time to take notes, et cetera. At the middle level, we know that it's most effective for students to get more routine instruction on a regular basis, and they may not have the attention span to sit through those longer classes. Um, so that was another plan that we, we were going to put in place. And, and now we're in a hybrid modality and kids are in um, shorter classes, more you know when they're in school anyway. Um, but we had just really started to make some strides in those directions and then COVID happened as everyone know. So, okay. all right. And I don't know if that was more information than you wanted, but. I got it. Okay. Thank you very much. So are we okay with the document to, to go out with uh, everything, with the new information that we have there. And I'm trying to think the other yeah, I think I sent out two documents through forums. So that will go out to the first thing tomorrow morning. And uh, for the Wednesday forums, I think that's sufficient. Uh, I don't know that facilitators need to reach out uh, to individuals. For the forums after Wednesday, uh, please, the day before, just connect with your folks, make sure that uh, they've got the link and they know what they're doing, those kinds of things. I think because they know you, they don't know me. I think that's a, that's just a good uh good practice to uh, to do. Any other thoughts or issues with with the forums? When can just ask a question, are the second forums set in stone? Are those dates going to happen like this? I think the second one for students is the 16th or something. Is that still a go or are we, we going to talk yep. about for that one? Uh, or are we pausing on that? Yeah, are folks OK with the with those? Are those any of those bad dates? David, is that a bad date for you? No, oh, we got two Davids, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, do you want to identify which of you, well, let me, let me ask it in a different way. Do you wanna just take the second forum like you did the first forum? Whoever the facilitators were for the first, take the second. Okay, and I think the, the door is still open for the second forum. Uh, remember, that's the high school one that, uh, that we may have different participants or we may have the same. And I'm gonna leave that more up to facilitators. If you've got a really long list and uh, you've really got too many people for the first forum, then shift the, the overage participants to the second. Uh, I just I had a forum in Barrie just before this one tonight, and we had 15 in it, and it actually worked. We were able to get it done in an hour and had adequate time. So depending on uh, the stakeholders, sometimes we could have a few more. Uh, I'd like to keep it 10 or less because it gives more dialogue time for those that are in it. But if you're in a quandary and you only had 12 people, don't take six the first time and six the second. Bring on 12 for both forums. And I think that that's the, that's the guidance that I'll give you. And I'll let you decide uh, if you want to have totally different people the second, the second time out or, or the same. 
Thoughts about that? All right, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, ar and arbitrarily assign uh, the same facilitators for the, uh, for the second. Okay, and let me just run through with you how uh, it's worked really well uh, with the thumb voting. I'll start the forums. I'll give the context. I'll start with the questions. And as soon as I get into the questions, I'm going to go behind the, the curtain of Oz, so to say, and I won't be able to see the participants. So that's when I really rely on the eyes and ears of the facilitators to be able to tell me, uh, to be able to um, kind of moderate the forum so that everybody is not talking at once. Uh, but once we get in the flow, uh, we actually don't need to wait until you call on them and they come on. As long as the sequencing is working, let them flow because I can, I can keep up with, um, with capturing what they're having to say. Where I really need your eyes and ears is when they're voting because I can't see that. So just tell me, you know, four votes, five votes, whatever that is. And my question to you, do you want to remain pure facilitators or do you want to vote with your participants, especially if you're in that stakeholder role? What are your thoughts about that? Can we practice what you're, what you're thinking we might do? Yeah, all right, let's do it. Let me go into... We're supposed to have, we're supposed to be seeing a document, right? That the, that the people in the forum won't be seeing, but will be seeing it. No, they, they'll see it. Oh, they're going to see it. So yeah. are you going to be presenting these yes. questions? Yeah. And okay. this isn't good. I just want to is... sort of go run through. So I have an idea what to expect. You'll see th these exact questions. And am I in the, uh... No, I'm in sharing mode. So you can see my document now. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is this. I just got bullets. And when I hear what people have to say, I'm just going to capture it. And, you know, I'm going to continue to do that. And then eventually, when I get five or six kind of theme areas, then I'm going to shift it fully back to you. And I'm going to say, Ann, uh, on the first one, how many votes, how many thumb up votes uh, do you have there? Because I can't see the screens. So you're going to count them and you're just going to tell me there's nine. Uh, sometimes I'll give them more than one vote. If I've got five or six kind of theme areas, I might give them two or three votes. And uh, people could put, if I said three and uh, Jane Smith really likes that first one, she could put all three votes right there. Or she could do one here and she could do one here and and the like. So it's just a way to prioritize and get a little bit more kind of traction on um, multiple people think this is an important idea. And then I go on to the next and it works, it works pretty well to go through about, um, about six or seven questions. Okay. And I have another we, <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. So when I'm looking, when you're presenting, I can see two, four, six, eight, nine people. One of them is you. So is there a way for me to scroll down on here to see other people? So if I'm trying to count like thumbs up or something, mm -hmm. I can only see the first nine. But if we have, if I have you in there and then the other facilitator in there, how do I see the, is there, Maybe somebody who uses Google more than I do. Yep. Can, can you see the screen? You can you see the screen I just popped up? Can you see my text box? Can you see what I'm typing down here? So you could have those people you can't see uh, just come in by text. Okay, so maybe we should have them chat their answer. Yeah, Rather you can do than that. looking for a visual, a visual. What, Tell you what, every, 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 we're on here. Yeah. 
here who are using Google all the time, what do you do yeah. when you when you're trying to sort of tabulate where kids are at? Well, it if does have a. The, if you go to the three dots down at the bottom right hand corner, you can yeah. um, pull yeah. that up and it says change layout. Granted, tonight my layout is not isn't working. So like it, it does sometimes depend on how Google Meet is feeling. But yeah, right there, what when when Winton is showing is is you hit how tile. It, works, but it doesn't always work and on certain some computers it won't allow you to do all of that. Do you see what I did, Ann? Yes, and that and that works for me. Now I've got I've got a lot more people on here. Yep. But the other thing, I don't have everybody. I don't have everybody, but at least I have more. Um, I don't see it now, but there is a polling function, and I'm not seeing it. No polling function on this. That's only on Zoom, or yeah. No, yeah, wait. What is Zoom? Is Zoom. Yeah. Out, <laughs> no, no there, there's a po there's a polling function on Google Google Meet, because uh, I've seen it in Barry, but I don't see it here. So maybe you don't have that in your in your Google account, but I haven't figured out how to use it yet, so it doesn't matter. Uh, it's another way to vote, uh, but I think Ann, this sh this should enable you to be able to see all ten people. Well, uh, actually, maybe twelve because you've got you know a couple of facilitators, so that way you can see what you need to see. Yeah, perfect. And I'll just have them text in the chat if I can't see everybody yep. else. Just for the fun of it, if everyone would go to this chat here, let me back out and take you through it. Go hit your little chat button there and vote. Just put the uh, uh, one in it and hit your hit your arrow. I want to see what what it shows us. All right, you see that, Ann? So you see everyone voted in chat. So I don't know if it, yeah, you just. You use yeah, your side. And Su and Susan Olson also pointed out we could raise hands because there's that raise hands option. Okay, yeah, that's right. Thank you, Susan. Yep. So that's another way to do it. So you've got a primary and you've got a backup and you've got another backup. Just know that if you're sharing a screen or presenting, if you ask people to raise hands, you still can only see a limited number of people beside the shared presented screen. So the chat might be the best bet. Okay. All right. Your arm for bear, Ann. All right. Let me go back to the agenda. So are folks okay now that uh, we made that made that change and again i'm i'm working with you uh i'll certainly help you know as much as i can but it's it's difficult to to capture what they're saying and at the same time kind of facilitate the form and that's where the facilitators really come worth your weight in gold all right uh we'll be using the same questions for the Google survey. And the survey will be done in Google form. So it will show us graphs. It will show us a spreadsheet list of responses. Some of the, uh, some of the questions I'll, I'll use uh, data that we gather in the forums to build those Google uh, survey forms. So it, it's gonna be authentic. It'll be some of the feedback we get in the forums will also be the choices that people get in the online survey. And then there's some open-ended questions where they can put in whatever they, whatever they would like to. So sometimes those prompts help people uh, to have a bit more comprehensive uh, thinking about uh, the feedback that they'd like to provide. Uh, the only other thing that I'll ask facilitators just to be at the ready, especially early in the forum, uh, the forum. People haven't gotten quite warmed up yet. Uh, so don't be bashful if I ask a question and it's one of these, you know, 10 second pause and nobody says anything. And let's just say Kelsey and Ann are in that, are in that forum. Uh, I might say to you, Kelsey, what would you say about that? Or Ann, what are your thoughts? 
just as kind of bridging statements to get them moving. And then once they start, you can't stop them. But especially uh, in, in the virtual environment, it's tough sometimes to, to be the first. So just be, I don't want you to be surprised if I, if I pitch one of those out there. All right, uh, communication. I'm shifting now to the 7.30. We're a little ahead of schedule, but that's okay. Uh, what are some key talking points? Uh, and, and again, this is to alert people that forums are happening. It's also to let them know that surveys are coming. Uh, just brainstorm for a minute. What are some key thoughts? And I'll develop those into uh, tangible statements later. Uh, what are some key talking points to be able to go to the newspaper, to be able to go on Twitter, to go to uh, school websites, so on and so forth. What are your thoughts? All right, I'll, I'll do what I just said I would do. And what are some of the thoughts you have, or Kelsey, what are you thinking about as far as uh, communication talking points? Do you mean, I guess I'm not clear exactly what you're asking for. Well, I'm using these to develop uh, a little press release, a little uh, communication. Well, that, maybe uh, some, something like uh, uh, strategic OSA, strategic planning committee looking for your input. Something like that? Is that is that what yeah. you're thinking? Yep. I've been really, so I had the student group, and so I made a little presentation for the seventh grade because I don't know them, and I had the teachers deliver it to them, and I've uh, been really- have, Go ahead. I've been really playing up like the you know the future of our school, how important the voices of the students, you know, for the future of our district, um, you know, and, and what you know what they want to see. Like this is their this is their community, and and so their voice and choice is so important. Is what I've kind of been talking to the kids about a lot. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, what else? What about what about an elevator uh, talk? You're on an elevator for 10 seconds. What would you say to somebody? How would you tell them what's happening right now? Might it be worth, as we kind of talked about mentioning something along, you know, the lines of, you know, there's been some show and some difficulty between the transition between elementary and middle school. And there's, you know, this is an opportunity for folks to kind of voice, again, their you know, ideas or thoughts around that or learn what some of the changes that have been made are and something along those lines. Got it. Okay, got it. I'm just chunking things in here for now. Other other talking points? I, I think it might be Go ahead. Yeah, I think it might be important. <laughs> Lisa, it's yours. I was wondering if it might make sense in sort of the introduction of our talking points to reference the previous um, strategic plan, just so people have an idea of what um, a strategic plan is and what the goals are, um, and then build on that. Uh, and you know, include that the design team is made of community members, elementary parents, um, just the, the stakeholders who are on this committee as well. It's all yours, David. Um, um, I think that while there might be lessons that have been learned during this pandemic time, I think it's important that people know this isn't about the pandemic right now. This is about, this is, we're talking about the future, the, you know, next five years or whatever. Yeah, I think that's 
particularly important as we think about like the transition between middle school, I mean, elementary school and middle school, it's been really hard this year. Kids couldn't do tours or step up day or any of the things that we normally do because of the pandemic. So, so thinking beyond this one transition to what it has been before and what we, you know, can envision it being in the future would be good. Okay. Got it. Anything else? Okay. That's a great start. What I'll do is combine that with some of the other uh, communication points that we already have, and that's what we'll uh, we'll put out there. So, uh, to to get this on school websites, uh, and this might be a question for Lane or David. Uh, what do I need to do? Who do I need to send this to for school websites? Um, if you email it to me, I can get it to Ben Merrill, who manages our, our website. Um, if there are broadband communications that people want emailed out to the entire um, district body, um, all parents, all staff, I can do that as well. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Well, I think that's good there. Let me do, go back do you to. Want it on, there is a, some school. I know the high school has a Facebook page. I don't know if you want to put it on that. Sure. Well, and I think Lisa Floyd, you've checked me on this, but Lisa Jacobs does that in the main office. Yeah, Lisa does takes care of the Facebook most often. I think the elementary school has one too, so we can get it on our social media for sure. Why don't I do this? Why don't I email to Lane, to Lisa, to David, that takes care of middle and elementary. Um, anyone else should, should get that to post it? So we're good with that? Okay. All right, let me go back to our agenda. So we've got our questions, we've done our facilitators, thumbs up vote, we've done our talking points. Uh, you, you wanna begin to take a look at the high school questions? Remember we moved those uh, back and I know that that's the middle school. Let me open this up. All right, these are the these are the questions for high school. Uh, These are based on your ENDS policy. So the first one, knowledge, skills, and tools the high school's students need to be prepared for the next stage. This is part of your mission statement. In fact, it, it, it's almost all your mission statement. Uh, do you want that? Do you want that to be a question? And I, I can't see you folks, so somebody's going to have to speak up here because I'm behind the uh, the current of Oz, so to say. I'm seeing a fair number of head shakes. And thumbs Actually, up. Anne, will you act as my facilitator, my eyes and ears oh, here? Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah. Let me let me just go to my three dots and see if I can get any people here. All right. Move to my right. Okay. Let me see as much as I can here. All right. So the second one, what does Randolph Union High School need to stop, start, continue? Do you want to make the the kind of structural change to uh, the stop, start, continue in the high school one as well? I'm seeing head shakes. Okay. What what was the language we used? 
I think we changed it to need to do, I think, right? Is that right? To ensure, yeah. Okay. So again, this is taken right from your ANS policy. What do, what do you think people would say? Let's just take critical thinking and let's pretend like we're in a forum. What do, what do you think the participants might say about that? We think they would disagree with that? Thoughts or issues? How can we how can we frame questions around this? Or do we just use this as background information? Is there a way to sort of indicate again maybe what is being done, you know, currently to sort of approach critical thinking or foundational knowledge? I mean, obviously I know there's the basics, but as again, is there sort of information like we have for the middle school where you could kind of use it as a, a presentation of what's there and maybe that can start some talking points for folks of then what they might think could be different or changed. All right. That makes sense. Folks think that's a good idea? Okay. All right, let's do it. Um, so that will be background. What about when we get to, yeah, all right. So this will all be background. Let me copy this. Well, and Winton, this is Lisa speaking. Um, we, can, we can take that and add some bullet points like we did for the middle level. Um, yeah. and I, I mean, we can probably turn that around tomorrow so we can do it pretty quickly. Um, just to add a little more context to this document, if that would be helpful. That would be. Okay. All right, Lisa. All right. So that gets us, let me just look at the question above. So what do you think participants would say, knowing that this is going to be background? What do you think they would say that the high school needs to do to ensure students are meet the following graduation standards? And let's just brainstorm here for a minute. Uh, this would be uh, stakeholder. Responses. What would you say if I posed this question to you? Winton, this is David White. I just no. finished watching Social Dilemma because my 10th grader did it in social studies. So the first no. thing that came to my mind was where are they getting their information to do the critical thinking? What's their source of information? Is it just some guy in his car doing a YouTube video or is it CBS News or is it Fox News? Like where, where is the source of the information coming from? Went and this is Anne. I would add yeah. to that. Um, are they aware of that that they need to be looking at where their information is coming from? Because <laughs> sometimes I hear students say, "Well, it was on the internet, so of course." You know? yeah. <laughs> so to help them understand, sort of, that it's important to check where you're getting information from. Okay. Good. Keep going. That you're on. You're on a good uh, good flow here. For the younger kids, um, especially, so that it's a skill that it carries over when they get older, it's how to stay safe um, in terms of using technology. Got it. Hey, what else? What, what comes to your mind if you're forum participants? How could you give feedback to the school about 
the critical thinking. So are we talking critical thinking here for, for this response? I was, yeah. Okay, let me move that up then. Okay, anything else under critical thinking? All right, let's go down to, oh, yeah. Okay, so I would just add that sort of um, some relevancy to what they're learning to apply to real world problems as they're, they're developing their, their knowledge of their literacy and knowledge in okay. their subject areas. Yeah. Let's go to foundational knowledge. What would you, what would you say here? What would be your question? Don't worry about it. I'll clean it up afterwards. What would, what would be, uh, what would be appropriate questions under foundational knowledge? I'm wondering here, this is Ann again, if, yeah. because we're, we've been in the process of sort of developing curriculum and that has been something that Lane has sort of put some attention to and since he arrived, because we were sort of the middle or the elementary school sort of had theirs a little bit more in place and the high school, from my understanding from what he has said, there wasn't necessarily a, a clear curriculum in place. Um, and so I wonder if we would maybe want to add, I know, and Lane, you, you tell me if this is what's been going on, but they've been working with sort of developing and adapting the curriculum to sort of the common core standards of the state. Has so the, and, yeah, and the, so the elementary had already done that work the high school, when I came in the door, um, was under the mandate that they had to create the graduation proficiencies and the standards-based report cards. And so all their time for those first two years um, was devoted to that work. So they are lagging behind being able to do the curriculum work, um, lagging behind the elementary schools because of that. They literally had to stop everything and then every meeting they had, and it was probably going on for at least a year or two before I came. Um, was was focused on on that process. Yes, it's related to curriculum, and yes, that process would have been easier had they had actual actual um, fully developed curriculum at the time, which some of the groups did, not all. Um, but they did not have the time to refine uh, the curriculum to the Common Core standards the way the elementary school has had. So the high school is evolving. Yes. So they are they have the structures in place now. They have a CADA. Uh, not a K to 12. They have uh, two directors, um, one for ELA and one for mathematics that is driving a process to help with that work. Um, those are two of the structures that we built in the last two years. <clears throat> as well as Lisa and Katie and yeah. Okay, so is this, this will be then more background than it will be actual questions. I can't see anyone. So Lane, if you could just let me know, this is more background. Um, there is no, if we're talking about the foundational knowledge, um, you know, one of the, one of the issues is um, interpreting what does that mean, right? Because for us to be able to do the work and to put it into practice, we have to have an interpretation of what it means. I've chosen um, due to lack of other information to interpret it as meaning we're following through on what the nation expects of schools and that's right now that's common core. Um, and so we've been working towards that end, but there may be, I know during discussions with the board, um, there may be other meanings behind that, what foundational knowledge is above and beyond what we're required to do for the state and the nation. Um, and that might be worth um, digging into a little bit, you know, what is a value in terms of foundational knowledge 
in addition to the state and the national work that we're doing that is valuable to this particular community. Yeah, I agree and think it would be interesting to hear more about the life skills, for example. That's not something that always people think about, but um, it comes up a lot like, oh, I wish I learned this in high school and maybe a financial literacy course or a, uh, there's lots of topics there under life skills that I think could be thought of and maybe they're already being taught of some, I don't know. I don't I haven't had a kid go all the way through, so I'm not sure which, what's covered already. No, it was funny, their foundational knowledge, there's like six areas. Um, in my first year here, I started working on all of them or trying to, um, because there hadn't been a lot of work done across the district on them. I realized very quickly that it was too much. Um, there was too much work to be doing. We weren't gonna be able to get any of it done well. We'd have people scattered all over the place. And so I pulled people back into the core, which is the math and the ELA first, and then added the science on. And the special education services is also a piece um, just because we're so far out of the norm um, in terms of our special ed population, how, how large it is. Um, and so I said, that, and I actually wrote that in one of my more bigger narratives of, of an end report when I was still doing the narratives and basically said, it's too much. It's not that we won't work on them, but we can't do it now. We need to focus on these four areas. Okay. So uh, Lane, do you want feedback from these forum participants? Is there any uh, salient value? Uh, that that, that life skills one, especially, we started a little work on it, but that would be beautiful to know what folks expect or would like. What is the definition for this community of the life skills that we should be providing to our students as they work their way through our, our K to 12 grades? Hey, Wynn and Lane, this yeah. is Jeff. Um, I'm thinking about the, the parent forum and I'm a little worried about going down the rabbit hole here of like, how do we assess whether or not they actually meet these foundational skills? And then, you know, what's a MP, what's a PP, what's, you know, yeah. what's an EP? <laughs> and, uh, you know, how my kid, you know, get an EP for content, but got a PP for habits of work. If he, how did he, you know, I'm a little worried about like, what do we say uh, when they start diving into, you know, those proficiencies and assessments? Uh, you're right. And what I've heard in other forums, there's a cohort of folks that don't like proficiency based uh, standards at all. And some that like them a little bit and some that just don't know very much about them. Uh, so we're likely to get some of that. Um, help me, I, I really like this question because I think uh, anyone can share their ideas and beliefs about that. And I think we can get some good data from it. What other questions either around foundational, foundational knowledge, uh, or we can go down to ability to adapt and we've already done some of the technology. Where did I put that? I think it yeah. would be really great to get a question and I don't know exactly where it would fit, but about community involvement and just sort of the connection with the high school and the community and whether they're doing things within the community to work on those life skills or just some of what that is. I think it would be um, something to, again, what, what expectations do families have about the students being involved in community, um, you know, type things maybe, or something of that sort. Okay. Are you saying community service? Yeah, I think community service, internship opportunities, um, you know, vast opportunities, whether it be, you know, um, Norwich connections, all I think kind of any any level of those things, um, as well as just, yeah, kind of being feeling like a full sense of community in the high school as being part of that, you know, that Randolph community. So kind of all of the above, I guess. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you. So probably if we're listing some things um, that that happen. Um, also, project-based learning and senior projects should probably be included in that list um, in terms of community 
involvement. And are we asking that question as if one, we either want it to continue or we want it to end? Well, I like the way Lindsay um, phrased it. What expectations do parents have around these things or, or community members? I mean, this is the high school series question, so. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And again, I think it's quite, really yeah. important to affirm that this is future focused because some of these things, such as um, job placements, internships, those things during this COVID era, are not what they would have been in a more normal school year or what we expect them to be in the future. Okay. Great point. And just to bring it back to the other forums, you mentioned like what expectations do parents have, but I think it can be the same for students. Like what expectations do middle school students have around community involvement and senior project and even those types of things. So I think we can, or the same thing like you said, what, what do expectations does the community have of the high school to be involved in those types of things? So I think we can phrase that particular question to hit each of the different groups. We could even plot business and nonprofit in there as well because they're, um, they got a dog in this fight. <laughs> they're the recipients of, uh, got it. Okay, I hear you. I think we're getting some good stuff here. Let's see what else we've got in this, uh, this high school question. Uh, so how are you feeling about this one? Sure that students are successfully prepared to complete their, their tech center program, world of work. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty okay with these kind of questions. You know, here's your senior project, here's your AP course college dual enrollment. Um, I thought I had an early college. Do you have students that, to, that take advantage of early college? Yes. The BAST program, do you have students there at VTC? Yes. Okay. Is there any particular question, any change you'd like to make to this one? Good. Anne, are you helping me? Because I can't see folks. Let me see. Folks, give me, I'm seeing shaking heads. I'm seeing shaking heads. Thumbs up. Okay, good. Nothing's in the chat. So. Okay. All right. What about this one? We we use this in the in the middle school. Should this be a high school question? Number four. I'm seeing shaking heads again. Meaning meaning a yes head yes, or a no head? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Got it. Uh, and this one. And then this one maintain a strong connection with at least one adult in the school community. I'm seeing shaking heads, thumbs up. Okay. And then uh, student voice in the high school community. Shaking heads. All right, it would be helpful uh, if someone, and maybe this is Elijah, or maybe it's Lisa, but I don't wanna burden Lisa with any more, she's got plenty, uh, to be able to give examples of what What's available now for student voice? Is that fair to ask Elijah? Yeah, so I can share this this document um, with Elijah and Katie, um, and we can definitely put some indicators around these things, or not indicators, but descriptors. Yeah. Winton, do you want to change that language again to to away from the stop, stop, start, yeah. continue, and just. Okay. 
Got it. Wonderful. Well, I think we're in good shape here. Um, Winton, yeah. Winton, David White, David White here on number five. If you're looking for examples or conversation starters, for me, on number five, what's been huge for our family is the advisory group. And, um, you know, having a, having a single focal point where the kids start every day. I mean, I know it's not happening in the pandemic, but they normally have an advisory, uh, a teacher that they meet with first time in the morning. And it's that same teacher and same group of kids throughout their whole high school years. And that, that was, that's been really helpful to have a, a, that one adult to go to as kind of a, somebody to help advocate for you or just bounce ideas off of and ask questions. I know that in the past you've had mentoring. Uh, I think that's going to happen again. I know that uh, Laura is a key player in that. Uh, what else other than, than advisory group, mentoring? And now question five, what would you say is in place normally? Any, uh, any thoughts? I think if you just generally, this is Gus, if you just generally say a key teacher, people might interpret that the way they need because each of my kids had a certain academic focus and there was a key teacher involved very closely with each of them in their own academic focus. So I think people would interpret that the way they need to. Okay, perfect. Any, any other resources? Things in, in yeah, normal want to include, uh, coaches. Oh yeah, good idea. Yep. yep, coaches or advisors. Cause we do have some some non-athletic clubs, et cetera. Well, maybe not advisors because we said advisory, but um, I'll say club advisors. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Other other student voice. What about uh, what are some of the clubs where student voice would be key? Are, do you have a Black Lives Matter movement or? I think there's a social justice club, I think. Okay. Yeah, we, I mean, we have a racial justice alliance. Um, we have our theater company. Um, we have a gay straight alliance called GLOW in usual school years. Uh, G-L-O-W, yep. Okay. I'm trying to think. Um, and we have some other clubs that, that meet right now um, for the pandemic, we have cooking club the kids are doing at home. We just started a poetry club um, and a music club that has met a few times as well. Beautiful. That gives folks a good idea of uh, what's available. Okay. I think we're in pretty good shape here. I very much appreciate your help. Uh, because it's important to know kind of what the resources are on the ground. So let me shift out of this and back and here. There was a, number five still had the stop, start, continue language. I'll, I'll, I'll make, I'll make that there. change. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've done some fabulous work tonight. And this I, is a, I have a question about the alumni group. I'm not sure who's running that, but both of my kids are alumni. Um, and I don't think... Uh, either of them has been reached out to, but most alumni don't actually use their school email account anymore. So I'm wondering if we need to get creative with more social media or use <clears throat> alumni who are now employed at the school. And <laughs> I've, I've reached out to some alumni in Anne's household. Yeah. Um, and I've been using almost exclusively um, social media to reach out because they're using email addresses from all over the place. You it's, bet. And if you could reach, I don't, I don't have contact information for your two Gus, but mm -hmm. if you want to reach out to them and have them send me an email, I would welcome that. Um, okay. No problem. <laughs> thank you. 
Good idea. That's that's the power of the group. Thank you. So I think we're we're good. Uh, who should I reach out to? And this might be a David question, um, a Lane question. Who should I reach out to uh, for help on developing a Google Form survey? Who's your technology wizard that once I develop the course? Yeah. Tina, Tina Scheindel. Okay. Yeah. And she's, she's actually, you interacted with her. She set you up with your email account. Yeah. Okay. I got it. All right. Well, any, uh, any last words before? I hate to let you go early. I mean, we could stay till late if you'd like, or we could go now. <laughs> so any, any, uh, any thoughts, any questions before we go to battle this, uh, this week? Figuratively. Oh, I was, I didn't see on our, um, on our timeline, our, another meeting in between all of our um, forums. Is that true? Do we not meet again until after the middle school and high school for feedback forums? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we'll, we'll meet after that. And I think it's on maybe February 16th. No, let me look here. We meet again on March 16th. So we meet after uh, the second series. Oh, hmm. We should meet in between the first and second, shouldn't we? Let's take a look. That's good. I don't, I don't know how I missed that, but I did. So the first set of forum forums end on February 11th, and the next ones are on the 16th. Uh, let's take, take a look at calendars here. So a potential date would be sometime between after the 11th, but before the 16th. So it looks to me like, wow. Uh, 16th at three o'clock. Yep. Well, I am booked up every night. I don't think you want to meet on a Friday, do you? What are your, what are your thoughts about that? I'm, I'm open on the 12th, but I have no other time until, well, we could, well, how about the evening of the 16th? We will have done the teacher, uh, the teacher high school culture, but it'll be before the other one. So the only times I have are Friday the 12th or Tuesday the 16th. What's your, uh, what's your pleasure here? What would we be using that meeting for just to prepare and maybe any learnings from the first few, from the first forums through, you know, because well, we have gone it, through that? It, it would be, Yes, it would be to uh, kind of streamline any, uh, we do a debrief on the first set of forums before we go into the second set of forums while it's still kind of fresh in our minds and begin to process the data that is gleaned from the middle school forum and then prepare for the, um, for the high school forum knowing that one of them already will have happened at three o'clock on the 16th. Would we expect to have survey data back by then or no? Yes. For the medical school forums. Yep. Yep. Because I'll be working on that in the next day or so. So uh, the survey data will go out almost the same time as the forums start. Uh, I might wait a, a couple of days because I like to extract some of the uh, kind of the key points that I hear in the forums to be able to uh, embed that in the, in the survey because then it's, then it's then it's your stuff. It's people in your communities have said that, so it makes sense to add that uh, as some of the choices in the in the Google form. So we're down to down to two dates. One's a terrible time; it's Friday night at six thirty, and the other is a Tuesday night at six thirty. Unless there are there times during the day that would work for folks, because I'm booked at. Um, about four o'clock most days as well. I doubt that you're going to be very available. Tell me what you're thinking. 
You could do six o'clock in the morning. I don't think you have too many conflicts then. <laughs> no. All right. Well, the choice is no. <laughs> I got it. The choice is no meeting at all, but you're going to have to kind of wrap your head around feedback uh, from the two forum series or a meeting on Friday night, the 11th or 12th, whatever that is. At uh, We could do earlier on a Friday. What, what if we did like a late afternoon on a Friday rather than an evening? Is that a possibility or is that just bad news? Yeah, because I'm wide open on Friday. And I'm not hearing much movement here. Do you want to have a thumbs up? All those that want to meet sometime late Friday, show me a thumb. Yeah, I thought so. I knew it was a bad time. All right, how about Tuesday the 16th? Show me a thumb at 6.30 at night. All right, that's what it's going to be. And I'm looking to make sure those are thumbs, folks. Remember, we only vote with thumbs. <laughs> All right, I'll send you out an agenda for the 16th. That, uh, is 6.30 still a good time for you? Yeah. All right. We're good. Don't hate me, but thank you for bringing that point up. Have a, have a good night. Thank you for your good work. Bye for now. Thank you.